What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. As you can see, we're in the garage, surrounded by lovely, lovely motorcycles. Oh, man, that vinyl wrap. I'm so happy that's behind me. Oh, man, it looks so good. Very happy with it. And then there's the Jixer. So this video is all about the Jixer, man. We're, I've had to put that project on hold, if you will. Um, one, I wanted to focus and get the lime green vinyl wrap project done on the ZX-10. And that's done. It's behind me. I'm still waiting on some stickers, man. I ordered stickers from, I don't know, freaking Mars, outer space or something. They're taking forever to get here. But they will get here. We'll get them on the bike, do a nice cinematic shoot um, with the lime green and the stickers. But that project's done for the most part, and um, it's behind me now. So now I can kind of refocus. Life's been super busy. Um, I've had to deal with some things, and um, it, it just it's been hard to... I had to pick and choose. I had to prioritize. I had to put the Jixer on hold so I could finish the wrap because there just wasn't a lot of a, a lot of time left in the day during the week to, to try and tackle both. So Jixer was on pause. Vinyl wrap is done. Jixer is back on resume. And let's get to it. Oh gosh, isn't she gorgeous? Boy, I can't wait for summer. We're gonna do some riding. Anyway. Video is not about the Lime Green ZX10, it's about my 97 GSXR 600. So, the goal for today is to do a couple of little things on these carburetors. I've got a couple of screws that I don't even know how I got these back in. They're so stripped out, they're horrible. We're going to replace those two screws. We're going to pull the flopos off and just make sure. I'm kind of paranoid because I watched somebody else's video, <coughs> Gorilla Biker, and. Um, I just want to make sure that after all these years sitting in the box, I don't have any floats that are stuck. We'll go ahead and measure the heights. And then I've got two screws that are missing in the butterflies, one there, one there. So long story short, I pulled these carburetors off many years ago after the bike had already been sitting for many years. The carburetors were all gummed up, so I pulled them out, separated them all, cleaned them up real good. and. I think I stripped the heads. It's been so long, I can't really remember. But these two screws were not reusable. So I've got to replace those. I want to replace those two because they're just stripped out. I can't even believe they got back onto the bowls. And then like I said, we'll make sure that we don't have any stuck bowls. The carburetors are already off the bike. Now's the time to do it. We'll go ahead and measure the uh, float heights just in case. I mean, the bike was running. I can't imagine that the float heights need any adjustment. Do I actually prefer to use a ratchet and a socket with the Phillips head adapter on the end of it to take off the float bowl screw. Sometimes they can be quite stubborn and it's a lot easier to apply pressure onto the screw head and twist at the same time. So that's why I like to use a ratchet. That one doesn't bite at all. It is, the head is so stripped out, I can't get the attachment to bite, not one bit. So we're gonna skip those last two and save them for last. We'll go ahead and take off all these other floats, all these other float bowls, I should say. And these just pop off so easy using ratchet it's kind of weird taking these off so many years later I definitely wish I would have made time to just keep the bike running but I just got so consumed with motocross any spare moment I had just went into riding or working on motocross bikes. The poor Jixer just sat and it wasn't until recent years I even started to think about it because I haven't really raced motocross to any serious degree in a number of years. I'm gonna put these screws in here so bowls look pretty clean all these years later as they should because I've already done what we're doing right now once before. I just, I'm just a little paranoid. 
We're just going to take it apart again and just check the floats and make sure none of them are stuck. We'll recheck the float heights. It's easier to do it now rather than put it on the bike, fill it with gas, and then have a problem. Okay, so for these last two, let me try this one. I haven't tried this one. Oh man, there's no way that's coming off. There's just no bite whatsoever. It's so stripped out. So for these last two, I'm going to have to use vice grips just to break them loose. So um, this is going to get ugly. I wouldn't blame you if you want to turn your head away from the camera. We got both of those loose. That wasn't too bad. Even <laughs> these things are stripped so bad. These screws are stripped so bad that even with, oh no, oh, that sucks. Uh, even, even with the screws loose, they don't turn so good with the, um, the screwdriver bit. It, it actually comes off better with your fingertips, but, um, I broke a bowl. How awesome is that? So maybe we can see it better that way. So that sucks, but we got these horrible screws off. There we go. That thing is just stripped out so bad. I'm going to take out one of the butterfly screws, probably this guy right here, and um, go get new screws and order a new float bowl. <laughs> All right, so it's been a couple days since, uh, in real time, for you guys, it's instantaneous, through the power of video editing. And I've gone to Ace, the helpful place, Ace Hardware. So those people have, that store has an amazing assortment of screws, machine screws, stainless steel. We were able to find replacement screws that fit perfectly. These were not easy to find. They don't show up in OEM uh, micro fishes. I couldn't find them anywhere. You might be able to find some on eBay, but I went down to Ace Hardware. They had them, they're the right length. They fit perfectly. These screws have um, tapered heads. And so they kind of sit nice, perfect and flush in the butterfly. So thank goodness for Ace Hardware because I was really struggling trying to find those. I also ordered replacement screws for the float bowls. And while I was at it, I went ahead and got some new O-rings for the float bowls because they were only a couple bucks. Why not? Um, and I got some JB Weld to fix the flange where the bolt goes through that broke off when we were trying to get those stripped screws out. Unfortunately, they have discontinued these float bowls, so you can't get them through OEM. Um, but in the meantime, we'll go with the JB Weld solution and get these back on the bike. I don't think we'll have a leaking problem because it was on the outside of the O-ring. It's kind of tough to see, but um, because it was on the outside of the O-ring, I think it'll seal just fine. And the JB Weld is pretty strong stuff. So it should hold, we'll see. All right, so what we were going to do next is actually measure the float heights and just make sure we didn't have any bowls that were sticking or float needles that were sticking. So we'll hold these guys up. As you can see, all the floats drop down quite nicely. They feel really smooth. So I don't think we have to worry about anything sticking. So I'm pretty pumped that I ordered the new float ball O-rings because these old ones are super hard and brittle. They definitely need to be replaced. Um, two of them broke as I was taking them out of the bowls. And this one literally broke right here. And I was just trying to pick it up and show it to you guys on camera. So I'm um, very happy I <laughs> got new ones. And this one also broke as well. So um, we're ready to go ahead and put the bowls back on to the carburetors. 
and then put the carburetors back onto the motorcycle. Woohoo! I'm getting excited. Instead of using my ratchet and socket, I will use a regular, regular old Phillips head screwdriver. I'm not interested in trying to torque the float poles down super hard. I only use the ratchet and the socket to take them off. So these new O-ring gaskets, um, they kind of fall right out. If you tip them over too far, they're just kind of sitting in there. So um, a little trick to getting these to install. Um, two things, I'm not gonna do one of them, but um, I have in the past used just a little dab of grease. You can take like a toothpick and just put a little bit of grease inside the bowl and that'll help the float, um, that'll help the O-ring, not the float, duh. It'll help the O-ring to kind of stay stuck to the float. Instead, what I'm gonna do this time is I'm just gonna tilt up the carburetors so that I don't have to lay the float upside down, right side up, whichever way you look at it, in such a manner that the O-ring falls out. So, one more time, let's put this guy in, get it all lined up, and then we'll just tilt the carburetor up a little bit. Layer back down, just keep some light pressure on the bowl, install screws continuing to keep light pressure on the bowl then once we get two of these screws snugged in whoops that didn't work out so well are we lined up i don't think we were quite lined up nice and perfect there we go Once it's snugged, you don't have to worry about the O-ring moving. You can take pressure off of the bowl. And I will slowly screw the bowl down one screw at a time, an eighth to a quarter of a turn. All right, two of them are on. Looking good. Okay, so the next step is to actually put the carbs back on the bike after been sitting in a box for, I don't know, a very long time. Long time. Long, long, long time. So there's our beautiful gems. We need to get those suckers in here. I guess first step should be to pull these old rags out. Oh, gosh. Even the rags are still kind of like holding form. They've been in there so long. <laughs> okay. Um, let's shine some light in these intake ports and see what we can see. I love this little light. It was like a Christmas stocking gift, but it's got a bunch of little LEDs. It's small. It's got a little clip if you wanted to clip it onto something like a shirt pocket. But look at that. Oh, can you even see? I don't know if it'll come through on the camera. But with the naked eye, I can actually see the tops of the valves. They don't look horrible. A little bit of carbon buildup. But not bad. I mean, the main thing is the rags did their job over a decade plus. Kept anything from getting inside there. Everything looks nice and clean. We'll mount the carburetors and then you use a Phillips head screwdriver, I believe, through the frame here. And that will tighten up these two ports. And then same thing from the other side will come through the frame. Tighten up the screw, which will lock down these two ports. And then we'll hook up our throttle cables and our choke cable. And I believe this is the throttle position sensor. That's right. Even in 1997, we had throttle position sensors. Anywho, let's get to it, man. <sighs> Woo! All 
right, man, not gonna lie. I struggled with getting those carburetors back on. So I did two things. Um, one, I put a little bit of grease, just a slither of grease on the intake boots where the carburetors slide in. Um, that didn't do the trick. I was quite surprised. Um, and then I went a step further, got pretty extreme, took the heat gun out and we heated up just the tops of those intake boots. And once I did that and I got them nice and hot, they were a little bit more flexible. I think they were just from all the years of having nothing in them other than rags, ugh, Ooh, excuse me. They were just hard and stiff and they just needed to be loosened up a little bit. So between the grease and the heat, um, I was able to get those things popped in there. We got the throttle cables hooked up. I'm stoked about that. We got the choke cable hooked up. Um, just gotta tighten them down, tighten the clamps down on the intake boots and that's it. The carburetors are good. They're all, well, I wanna say they're good till the thing runs, but they're on the bike. Throttle feels good. It returns quite nicely. It's nice and smooth. And we've also got choke cable hooked up. Nice and smooth. For those of you who are too young to remember, we used to have to choke our motorcycles. Yeah, that's it, man. So next week, we're going to rebuild this nasty piece of junk. Um, this will be the subject of the next video. We've got parts. We've got a new pet cock right there. We've got pump and screen and filter over there. Oh yeah. So I'm getting pretty excited. Once we rebuild the fuel pump in the next video, the video after that will be our first uh, start attempt after God knows how long. Um, we're getting close. We're getting close to a running motorcycle. We'll have to do brakes and probably some suspension work before we can ride, actually, we just need brakes. We can ride it with the suspension the way it is now, but we will do um, some refreshing of the suspension, seals and oil, um, probably have the rear shock rebuilt. But once we get some brakes, some working brakes, uh, we'll be able to take it out for a little test ride around the block. I'm pretty excited about that. So if you made it this far, thanks for watching, man. Super appreciate it. And if you haven't already subscribed, really looking forward to like firing this thing up. All right, we'll see you guys in the next one. Share, like, subscribe, all that, all that jazz. Yeah, if you haven't noticed, uh, I worked up such a sweat getting those carburetors off. I took off my, my monkey butt hoodie. <laughs> so I'm in a t-shirt now, but it's all good. Carburetors are on. Awesome. Little Rob Bailey in the background. Sometimes just chilling in the garage, working on bikes, a little bit of music good place to be. All right, guys. Peace out. See you later. Keep the rubber side down.